the mother bird is taking the little chick and going, and then it will, oh no, you can't fly like that, you have to do this. <laughs> I guess just to go along with questions about boys, my daughter's 17 years old. Um, there are times when, and many times recently, when she does not want to follow my direction. You know, um, how do I stay present when she's doing? You know, me. You know, going. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, so she's 17, she's and 17. so you've only got a few more months of uh, control over her, and then you have to uh, yeah. let go. Uh, well, she's, she's been at this for a while. So the, then the shift then as your uh, children grow older, of course, the younger they are, mm -hmm. the more you need to in some cases control what they do because mm -hmm. they might do something yes. to hurt themselves like don't play with fire, don't walk on a high wall because yes. you might fall off. So those things, they, and then gradually the parent needs to learn to allow a bit more, always mm -hmm. a bit more freedom and a bit more just give guidance rather than yes. control. Um, some parents find it hard to shift from exerting control as they grow mm -hmm. older and giving guidance mm -hmm. and as in teenagers especially they resent as you know you know and everybody mm -hmm. knows they resent being told what to do because yes. they're beginning to be independent adults well she knows everything yes of course <laughs> yes um so there's a as much learning for you okay. as there is for her mm -hmm. in this situation. Mm -hmm. For you it's to do with continuing to give guidance mm -hmm. without giving the impression that you're trying to control what she does. Yeah. And if guidance is not received, yes. no matter whether it's, it's given but it's not received, yes. then you need to accept that, especially, mm -hmm. especially as soon she will be reaching 18. Mm -hmm. Then you begin, and then compassion comes in. You continue to help her as much as you can, mm -hmm. offer help or guidance, realizing that she now has her, she is autonomous now mm -hmm. and will dis decide what to do on her own and she mm -hmm. will make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, because if she doesn't, she's not going to grow. Mm. She will make mistakes and you may see it and she won't. Mm. And ultimately, they're not really mistakes because they're all part of one's growth mm. process and becoming eventually conscious of mistakes if they are leading to suffering mm. and then can lead to awakening. And then retrospectively, they're not mistakes. If a mistake leads to awakening, it's mm. not a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, so it's a letting go mm -hmm. in, internally, mm -hmm. compassionate letting go, mm -hmm. like think of the image of a nest and the bird, the mother bird is taking the little chick and going, and then mm -hmm. it will, oh no, you can't fly like that, you have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> But birds have learned to fly for a million years and yeah. more yeah. without the mother bird telling them what to do. Mm. They'll, they'll learn, so mm. it's trusting in the movement of life mm. and realizing how that mis so-called mistakes are an important part of our mm. growth. Mm. And that's, uh, we had somebody else before we talked about yes allowing them to, to do that. Mm -hmm. So you, it's think of the image and that will help you to be, your, your associated question was to do with patience yes. or presence. This will help you, the, the bird, you let the bird oh. fly off. Yes. Uh, and the, the flight at first may not be smooth and mm -hmm. they may have a hard landing. Yes. 
and then you just watch and you know that's fine. Mm. Uh, do as much as you can. Mm. Patience is not quite the same as presence. Yes. Uh, in presence, the whole idea or concept of patience dis disappears. When mm. you're present and somebody says, yeah. Yeah. oh, you're so patient, mm. you say, patient? Mm. I didn't know I was patient. Mm. Patient is not is something that you're trying to do, mm. you really. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to be patient here. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> here is the key word. Okay. I'm trying to be patient here. <clears throat> so you're, the patience is something to want, you're kind of holding back. Yeah. I'm very patient yeah. with you. <laughs> uh, but in presence, really, you're not thinking of yourself as patient at all. It doesn't come mm. into it really anymore at all. You're just, you're just present with what is. Mm. Uh, and as I said, if somebody called you patient, you'd say, what does that mean? I'm not mm. patient at all. It's like forgiveness also. Mm. In presence, forgiveness happens naturally. Mm. And so you don't need to make a big deal and say, I'm trying to forgive mm. that person. Mm. I had, again, for my, in my life, I had re, for many years re, resentment towards my father mm. until I finally woke up. Yeah. And then the resentment disappeared and my relationship with him changed completely. There mm. was suddenly love. Mm. And for, well, until the age of 29, I had enormous amount of resentment. I didn't realize, of course, that he did what he did because of his programming. Mm. He was, had an enormous amount of anger in him that comes from his childhood. And again, I could explain why, but it's not necessary. Mm. It comes from his childhood and the way in which he interpreted his childhood what his mother did to him, not actually, rather, what he, how he interpreted her motivation. He was the seventh child, the youngest, mm. and then his father died when he was only 14. Mm. And then the family didn't have enough money to have all the children at school, at grandma's um, high school. So his, two of his sisters were kept at school and he was taken out of school because he didn't have enough money. Mm. And he had to become an apprentice in, a, in some store, um, not supermarket, they didn't have supermarkets then, but some store where he had to make deliveries to big houses. And then, and that enormous anger started to come up in him during all that time. What my mother did to me, what mm. they did to me. Mm. And that never really left him. Mm. So living with him, the anger was usually not directed to me, but it was directed to my mother always. And living there was like living with an unexploded bomb. Wow. It could go off at any moment. You, whenever he was there, it was like a powder keg. Any moment it could go off. One wrong word by my mum, and my mum was very good at saying the wrong word. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. 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 I didn't. I. That was his. He couldn't help that. And as I then disidentified from that. Uh, in his later years, there was a considerable degree of awareness coming in. The, some of remnants of that anger remained, but far less than before. And he read The Power of Now a few years before he died, and it was meaningful to him. And there was a, quite a bit, in some areas of his life, he was virtually enlightened. And in other areas, there were still big pockets of unconsciousness. Mm. But compared to what he was before, there was an enormous shift. Mm. And it has, I'm sure, something to do with the shift that happened in me mm. towards him. 
So there was no longer anything to forgive. I see. So that's the beauty of it. And it was all my, I had to, his ego was huge. Okay. So I learned about ego before I even knew the word ego. Mm -hmm. Throughout all my, all, all my childhood, I learned about how the ego behaves and what it does mm -hmm. through observation without knowing that that was ego. But I saw the dysfunction, normal dysfunction in relationships. It's all fine, trust, compassion, yeah. letting go, mm. and then life will do the rest. Mm. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>